So here are five easy KNF finished products, our lactic acid bacteria, our comfrey fermented plant juice, our fermented fish amino acids, water soluble calcium acetate, and calcium phosphate. Our LAB contains a nice spectrum of lactic acid bacteria. Our FPJ has got growth hormones, enzymes, microbes, and some nutrients. Our FAA is bringing in a wide range of plant available nutrients to the table along with some more complex enzymes and microbial activity and a good amount of plant available nitrogen. Our WCA is hanging on to a solid amount of calcium and our WCP is bringing in the phosphorus. And both of these last two are also vinegar based, which at the small doses that we're using these on the plants, the vinegar itself will stimulate a very, very, very mild stress response that will encourage the plant to protect itself from disease and some pests as well as vinegar just helps cleanse very small amounts of existing disease. Now on their own, each of these can be used as plant supplements along with other uses that we'll get to. The main thing that you need to know about applying these to your plants and soil is that we only ever apply these at very small doses per application. So the FPJ, the WCA, and WCP can mostly be applied at dilution rates of one to 500. So that's about eight milliliters per gallon of water or about a teaspoon and a half in a gallon. And our LAB and FAA are typically diluted one to a thousand, so about four milliliters per gallon or three quarters of a teaspoon. There's some nuance here. Sometimes it's recommended that you dilute a little bit more heavily, but generally this is kind of where these sit. You can check out our resources linked below with more specifics. These can be applied foliarly as a spray or as a soil trench where your plants are. You want to get all of your plant leaves covered when you apply these foliarly bottom of the leaves and always apply early in the morning or later in the evening after the sun has gone down. You also don't want to be watering right after a foliar application if you're using overhead watering because they will wash right off. If you apply these in the heat of the day, the sun is going to zap them and you run the risk of your plants getting singed. Probably won't happen, but best just to apply them earlier and later in the day. Now, if you want to take your spraying routine up a notch, there's actually some more strategic ways that we can think about applying these. And in order to get into that, we actually need to look at what exactly these inputs are doing for our plants. First of all, are these a replacement for an NPK rich plant fertilizer? No, not really at all if you're looking for a one for one replacement. But I'll argue that you really don't actually want to be using a high NPK fertilizer in the first place. And here's the rationale. When we give plants these three nutrients in abundance, and we spray them on the plants or mix them into the upper layers of the soil for them to grab, what's happening? The way we apply fertilizer to plants these days kind of mirrors how we as humans have been trained to eat for ourselves. It's all very accessible, neatly packaged up and nearby, so the plant doesn't need to stretch out its roots very far. What these type of inputs are doing is that they're not delivering massive quantities of nutrients directly to the plant. They're more helping to facilitate and train your plants and your soil to exchange nutrients. And this gets very, very complex and honestly out of my wheelhouse very quickly, but, but the, the gist of it is the microbes, the hormones, the enzymes, and the small doses of nutrients in these inputs are going to help your plants access nutrients from the soil beyond just the surface level. The LABs are going to play zone defense on the plant leaves against problematic bacteria and fungi. They're also going to interact in the soil by helping to decompose organic matter into bio bioavailable nutrients that they and other soil microbes can deliver in exchange to plant roots. The FPJ, on the other hand, is going to provide microbes for the root systems to engage with, but rather than facilitate defense responses in the above ground plant mass, it's going to provide these growth hormones and enzymes that signal to your plant that it's time to beef out their foliage. FAA acts in a similar way, except that out of all the inputs, this is delivering processed nutrients the most directly. And that said, we don't want to overfeed our plants because that can cause growth to occur too rapidly. That would look like a plant that is producing lots of leaves, but the stem and the branches are growing spindly and don't really have the structural support to hold things up well. WCA and WCP are, of course, going to provide small amounts of these structural components, 